Shanti, peace. Yeah, yeah, class today. We're doing this more. Shanti. Preparing ourselves for the emotional integration. This time there will be emotional integration. Should be simple and soft. Most of us. Shanti, bring yourselves at peace. The topic for today will be sensitive. The typical use of the word heartbreak is used usually when we lose a relationship or when a relationship ends. We don't say heartbreak in the case of someone dying, for example. But it is the same thing. Mourning is one thing, and the heartbreak is the challenge. Whether the person you had close simply ends the relationship, or it's a person that died, or someone who goes to another country and never comes back. Maybe it's because you're in quarantine. The story only changes something in the mind, in the way we interpret it. But for the human, the animal, and the emotional plane, there was someone here, and then there's not someone here. Regardless of how it happened. A heartbreak and mourning are two different things, but they both happen in every situation that I describe. When we are in quarantine, even the essential workers who have to keep distance from others, there's someone we like to see, a friend, a lover, parents and then you can't even the video call is is not going to do the same thing than the actual proximity where you can smell them and have an emotional contact with the flow of energy uh, close that's a heartbreak we're going through those who isolate, those who are not with someone, it is a heartbreak. We would not say the word, we would not use the word heartbreak because we say uh, it's uh, isolation, depression. But it's a heartbreak. It's, it's how the animal lives it, okay? So, Everything that you were used to before, the kind of product you used to consume that you can't anymore, that will cause a purification or a, a detachment. A person you cannot see will, would usually cause a mourning, but we, we don't quickly go to the mourning part 
because we imagine it's just temporary. It's, uh, it's going to resolve itself. The way the subconscious lives it, the way the animal lives it, the way the heart lives it, it's a heartbreak. Okay. So we're going to practice Shanti in the obvious way of making peace, peace with, but in the more profound way also, like I taught yesterday, accepting that is happening accepting what manifests or what happens. Shanti. Whatever I'm missing, whoever I'm missing, anyone, the people, mourn. Just mourn. Accept it. We did not lose these people. They did not die. And they did not go away, technically. So the human resists mourning. But we miss them. The amount of energy that we hold on to people were presently not available. causes us more drama, depression. So whoever you cannot be close with during this time of lockdown or social distancing, think about it and mourn. Your human will say, I don't want to mourn. I want to see them again. That's the trick. Because you hope to see them again, because they're alive, because you will obviously see them again eventually, you won't go through the morning and you'll keep that tension. I miss them. I miss them. I miss them. It's just rolling. It takes special kind of courage. <laughs> There's another expression that is almost the same here. It takes a special kind of courage to know you're going to see them again and still mourn. Go through the abandonment of they are not there. I accept what happens. I accept what manifests. So we're going to take a few minutes to go through that in application now that the theory has been initiated. Shanti, I accept what is manifesting, what is happening. I feel the attachment, the desire to see people, specific people or people in general. And I mourn. Just mourn. Allow the link, the bond to soften and dissolve. Even if you are going to see these people, consume these products do these activities later lose them now lose all of it accept what's happening and i'm mourning just a general sense of mourning i let it go it's unpleasant of course the attitude is visantara for those who studied it it's a general emotional integration of a specific topic, like in this case, just losing, lose, mourn, let go. The subconscious repeats 
those subtle, it's not even phrases, it's just pure thought influence. But I don't want to lose them. I'm going to see them again. I'm going to do that again. The fact that we're not mourning with a hope projected in the future, I hope I will see it. Probably will, but it's still a hope. Oh my God, did I just go all zombie apocalypse here? Maybe you're never going to see them again. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just suggesting holding on to something that is projected in the future causes a stress. It's not freedom. It's not peace. It's holding tight. Do you understand? So just lose. Have the courage to lose. I will not see this person for such a long while. I accept to lose. Even if I have a video chat in two hours with that person. I'm losing the experience. I will not see that person. The actual smell won't be there. Yeah, the smell. To, you, you, you can't transmigrate the smell unless you're very powerful. There's no point in trying. You'd rather mourn. And accept this is a reality. I'm just accompanying you in that process. Like I said yesterday, I'm living it. I'm feeling it. I'm going through the same motion. Maybe with a lot of practice and experience, but it's the same base. Just so glad that I can see my kids again. But while I could not, because I was at risk of being infected, I was mourning, just accepting. Now I get to see my kids. I won't see a person that I love. Can't see my parents. They're, you know, it's dangerously uh, at risk. So I don't want to take a chance. So I mourn. It's completely different to play magic cards online or play magic cards in person, or Dungeons and Dragons so far, or at a table, sharing a beer with the people that you're having fun with. It's, it's different things. These are things that I'm mourning. It makes me sad. I'm sad and disappointed. I know you understand. There's, there's something in your life that changed through this world event that you're losing. If you're lucky to be with your lover, it's wonderful. Focus on another thing that you're losing. We are losing things. People. Experiences. Activities. Let's move to one step deeper. As I've been talking about it, observe inside. It's very subtle, so you'll have to make an effort. The part that doesn't want to. The part that doesn't want to is holding to the argument, but it's just going to be a few weeks more. It's just going to be a few months more. I'm just going to miss that for a period of time, then it's going to start over. It's using these arguments, so much hoping to relive those experiences, the activities, the products to consume, the people to be with. It's holding on to it. That maintains the stress. If you have the luck and the high probability of living those beautiful experiences in the future again, then you will. And you'll enjoy them again. But just holding on, missing them while you can't, it keeps struggle rolling 
that nourishes the loneliness depression it's very subtle I encourage you to to admit it we're using patterns like uh, I miss my job I miss my job for real traveling the world being with people teaching live you probably miss something deeply someone it's just gonna be a few more whatever the uncertainty is even worse we don't even know when <laughs> but it should be this summer it, it should be <laughs> come on let's use this opportunity to observe this subtle force holding on to hopes false hopes if it happens again it happens again if it doesn't it doesn't but while we do not have the experience we don't you're not mourning for the future and forever you're mourning now now I must find peace not living what I want to live now losing the thing I would want to live now it's about now not the future it's now it should go back not to normal but to a new normal it should you know we will continue to have fun hug those who we want and eat the stuff we want to eat and do the things we want to do eventually it will happen don't worry but you're not living it now now we lose it we lost it now and this is where we want to focus and see the forces that are trying to justify now they're so subtle that they might not even produce phrases in your intellect it's just a force holding a hope you know the feeling of hope without the words to talk about it just the feeling of that hoping it's there it's deep Just submit it, embrace it. I'm using this opportunity to teach this rare wisdom. This it's so rare I have the chance like this, where everyone is going through a situation that usually happens very rarely. When someone goes through life and they lose everything very quick, it's rare. Now most of us are in that situation. So I get to teach about this force in the belly. Just, but I don't want to, I don't want to. But it's there, the loss. when you get much older golden ages and you face retirement and the loss of health biological functions reduce can't digest what how you would usually can't have intimacy the way you used to can't have physical comfort because of this or that pain i did not live this yet I know it's coming I've I've seen it in others I remember past lives we all will go through aging at one point and lose everything lose absolutely everything so the force here that is saying oh I hope never to lose well, at one point 
you will die and lose absolutely everything. It is good to rejoice of life now, losing what you can't live anymore. And these justifications inside, just the, the hope, you know, soon, soon, a few weeks, a few months. False hope. And the ego in conflict, but, 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 but I don't, I don't want to mourn that. I want to live it again. Yeah. It has nothing to do if you will live it again in the future. Mourning has to do with, that's what I'm living now. I'm not having it now. Shanti. Not in meditation, but in accepting everything I don't live now, everything I don't have now, everyone. I don't feel now. Lose. Let go. Mourn. Just the courage to sit in mourning. Let's talk about another mask that inhibits the mourning process. Pride. Not the usual pride of, you know, the image I project. You know, you can't do this to me. But pride where it's not about an image. It's just the... You can't do this to me. Like life, you can't do this to me. You know? If you're sensitive, careful, subtle, you can see there is a pride that doesn't want to mourn. I don't have to do that. You can't do this to me, talking to some subjective life. Like if it was a person doing something to you. <laughs> How dare does life do this to me? <laughs> well, it's something happening. It's just something happening. There's that pride. Not about an image. Not regarding another. Just, I don't deserve that. It should not happen to me. I don't care. I don't want it. I don't want this limitation here. The battle, it's pride. Life can't do this to me. <laughs> Most useless pride battle, it changes nothing. Mourn your pride. Admit that it's broken. Admit that it's... It's useless. Defending yourself against what life brings. For all of you who think, oh, I have not that. I'm happy for you that you have a good ratio of pride resolved. What about the ratio that is not? Just... Be available. What inside me is still proud enough to think it does not apply to me? Or that I'm not suffering this. Yeah, well, sometimes you're just not suffering it, so I agree. Sometimes maybe you are subtly suffering something and you pretend, bah, it doesn't really matter, right? Well, if you, if you have a subtle voice that needs to say, doesn't really matter. It means you're living something. Okay, that one, most of you didn't catch. Okay. 
if if there has to be ah uh, it's okay i don't mind if you have to say these phrases if you have to mention yeah i'm good well actually if you say you're good something you i mean when you say does not apply to me or yeah it doesn't really matter feel if you say it honestly as it's okay i'm just at peace with it or it doesn't really matter and your face makes that yeah it doesn't really matter but i'm exaggerating but you're just doing yeah it doesn't really matter but you have a small thing like there's something inside that says but it doesn't really matter but i'd really rather live the thing i want even though it, you know it's an extremely subtle lie to ourselves a very subtle i know it bothers me but not enough to resolve not enough to hurt but that means take a hundred of those very soft potential that don't really matter and they're pushing they're holding on to this missing something and one little here one little there a little bit everywhere I would never have wished this experience on anyone. But now that we have it, let's benefit from this experience that most of us are going through. So we can study the subtle denial against mourning. The subtle denial of our attachments. When we are really at peace, we don't need to justify, "Ah, it's okay, I can do without." There's a big difference between saying, "I'm actually cool. I'm happy that it's good." Like for me right now, not having a single drop of wine for a long time, I'm actually good. It's cool. It's a complete different feeling than if, "Yeah, it's okay." I'm you know i can have wine later one day it's it's cool it's a completely different attitude like i'm really happy not having to take alcohol and well actually uh it feels good it feels good <laughs> it's it's i appreciate it but there was a times like yeah whatever i can do it up it's a completely different thing nothing against alcohol by the way if you want to have a, a blast enjoy and stay stay focused on being conscious and responsible so i've liked to myself earlier during this quarantine it's okay i've been a monk before past life i've been ascetic in this lifetime for a few years i can do without and then i make this you know this less subtle ah, it's okay i'll be okay ah if i'd like it's it's just false hope one day i'll have someone else or i'll be with people one day i'll consume this kind of food or one day i'll have this new experience i'll go back to my job it's okay i can do without right now i miss experiences shanti not as a okay if you use shanti and you go meditative or oh, i make peace then stop using the word okay stop using the word i want us to go to i accept that i am not with these experiences now just move on I use a lot of personal experiences just to inspire you. Please do your work and find your own experiences.
the subtle fighting, the subtle attachments, the subtle pretending that everything is fine. Mourn, lose. I accept it. It's okay. Using the word it's okay, not as, yeah, it's okay, but as it's okay. I lose. There are many experiences I don't have now that I will not have for a long time. Just lose. Let's mourn. Practicing mourning takes a long time. That's why the speech is long about it. That's to maintain us. It's to maintain us in that state. So the mourning works. And I'm sharing tricks about what is fighting against the morning. Making peace with something is not the same as learning to endure through a hardship. Yeah, it's okay. I'll endure it while it lasts. I'll, I'll suffer it as long as I can change it. That's not making peace. That's enduring. Okay. Peace implies loss. Mourning. It also implies gratitude. Rejoice of everything you have. Rejoice of everything you can benefit. This is absolutely awesome. <sighs> I don't want to speak of the next stage right now, gratitude. We'll go to that eventually. I want to just finish that morning correctly. Peace implies mourning. It will imply gratitude also, but it will imply now mourning. Just I accept, and really accepting is I don't have it. I'm not with them. I'm not doing this. The event that I miss is, it's okay. <sighs> oh, I just said the word gratitude and your subconscious is pulling to go, oh, let's go to do the gratitude now. You see, your system is really hoping not to see it. Feel inside. It will take a long time for peace to settle in. Cumulated hours of mourning. Truly accepting. Not living what you want like a loss even though your mind says it's not lost it's postponed it's lost now <laughs> postponed means losing it now the the now experience is not there that will never happen again now is gone the moment it happens <sighs> accumulated hours i mean 10 minutes here half an hour there an hour there and eventually Okay, true sense of peace in what is lost. All right, relax the practice. I gave you tricks. Whenever an unpleasant feeling rises and that you can feel it's related to forced asceticism. <laughs> we live in castles and furnished houses with fancy food, but we're not having what we usually would. It's not ascetic. Ascetic is begging the street hoping to have a floor to sleep in with a roof, you know. That's that's strong asceticism. 
At least that's what I went through. But some of you, ascetism is not having as much hugs as you used to. Okay? Well, that's, that's what you have. So whenever you have a hard moment, remember, it's a subtle heartbreak. All of that. Everything we're not going through. Everything we're not living. It's a subtle heartbreak. Just remember. And that means mourning. If you need this kind of hope to not fall into despair, yes, one day you will live those experiences again. But holding on to it now as a form of stress, I don't want to mourn that because eventually I might have it again. That is just a denial. Remember the other trick about pride. How dare does life does that to me? I don't accept. I'm not supposed to lose these things. It's too late. Every ev moment, every event that did not happen are lost. And everyone, every event that will not happen in the near future are lost anyway. They're not going to happen. And life did not do this to you. It's, it's life. It's just happening. Jivatai. Eh? It just, it's just happening. Push and pull. Stuff moving on. <sighs> Remember that. Okay? False hope and pride. It's a heartbreak with everything. Live a heartbreak. Be grateful that you will live again many things. Now we switch to gratitude. I'm living here. I was saying for years, I need to stop doing boot camps every month. I'm burning inside. Like, I'm so tired. I was crushed after a week. I was teaching four hours a day, sometimes two. But I was living deeply. Everything so subtle because I was so in love with what I do. Living, transmigrating, experiencing everything that I was burning out inside. <laughs> Regardless of what I lost, the forced vacation, ah, absolutely fantastic. I've supported the Mahriya, I've created the Mahriya entirely alone for the first seven years. And um, three to five years that remain that after that, I was doing it, but I had a few people to help organize. Yeah, that was 12 years. It's not the two hours of teaching. It's the four hours of working, legal papers, resolving a drama, handling the Mahriya in the back, making sure it becomes autonomous. It burned me out. I'm forced to be in vacation. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. So that's the thing I'm grateful for. I miss going back to seminars. <laughs> yes, there are ways where I miss it a lot more. But I can miss seminars and still be grateful for the rest of the vacation. We get to hang out together here, huh? The fish and gal galim, everyone, huh? We're, we're together in this. It's pretty cool. There has to be something you're grateful for. Imagine the worst. 
and then say, that worse is not happening. I'm with the person I love. Unless um, it's too much and you're fighting a lot, then you probably have other kind of integration to do. Okay, Stop blaming the other. Don't always be in their presence. It happens. Try not to be in conflict, but that's another class. Resolve your issues. Be humble. And also spend time alone. Very important. If you get angry at people, don't be around these people. In the same house, just have space if you can. But there has to be something or someone to be grateful for. I'm grateful I can see my kids now. <laughs> That's cool. That's absolutely awesome. <sighs> There's a lot of little things I'm grateful for. I'm satisfied with myself also. Count the positive things. There's all the negative things that you want to resolve. Yeah. But let's look at the positive things. I'm happy I take a shower every day. I take five days on seven, I will take a shower. I, you, usually we just don't care, but I'm happy to just feel it, feel clean. Clean environment, except the floor that yeah, more or less do, but I live alone. <laughs> we don't carry shit around a lot. So it's not perfect, but it's, it's keeping me, I feel more sane. Dishes are done at the moment. I know I'm coming back with that often, but a pile of dishes, it smells. It triples the amount of time you have to brush and scrub. And it's a symbol of you accumulate potentials inside that you're not resolving. Now, the floor is due. I just said something about dishes and I just said something that my floor, I haven't done it in more than two, three months. Uh, so it means it's where I'm grounded, the earth element, it's the base that I'm not taking care of. Oh yeah. I do lack discipline. Well, <laughs> lack. I'm not very severe with myself anyway. No. It can be the absence of discipline in my practice. Because I practice something almost every day. I'm going to find it. I always find it. It just takes time and patience. Let's play a game. I'm grateful for tons of things, okay? End of teaching. We've done that. Let's move to the final stage of this class. With all that I've taught you, what do you think it means? That I clean everything. I even do my bed in the morning. I, I wear fresh clothes. I do my laundry. I don't clean the floor. And it's, I know it's due. There's bugs dead in the corners because I live in the wild. There's always bugs dead in the corner. Type it. I want to see your answers. Because I can't find it. I could if I took 15 minutes alone, but this is class. This is fun. Let's just play the game. Just, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Just type it. And I want to read the comments <laughs> and see what, it's just funny. Yeah, it takes time for you to find something. And it also takes time. It takes up to 45 seconds for you to get the video before I, I see it. So it's a time. I need some level of imperfection. No, I have so many wonderful special traits that I never call imperfection. Imperfection and perfection is a misunderstanding. Rebel. It, I think the imperfection comment is 
um, something does not want to exist here. Okay, so okay, a denial, a, a rebel. So something doesn't want to exist. Good. So lack of incarnation. I understand. Uh, something. Uh, okay. It's fun to see what the earth does when left unchecked, but I could clean my thing. It brings <sighs> presence. Yeah, so lying to myself, false presence. Okay, we're good. Thanks. Uh, it's the class I just gave. You found it. It would mean to physically incarnate the wisdom I actually have resolved at the emotional level. Um, all of you have brought a little comment and it, it got me to get it. This ease I have to mourn emotionally. I have not physically grounded or grounded in the, in the animal. The loss. It's hard for my back. I'm getting a pretty good back and good pectorals and, you know, I train. Like I've never trained before. Thank you, Janelle. You want me to have fun. It's acceptable. It's I mean, it's not dirty. Come on, I live in a clean place. But if I take time to clean stuff and I don't clean the floor, it's not incarnating one thing. It's the pride, but I don't want to lose. A woman to hug it's a very simple and it's deep and I found it it is the one thing that still it doesn't hurt that still disturbs me it does it's not painful for me but I think yeah it's okay I mean it's not painful I'm just like lonely I wake up and there's no one there it's like but that's it it's 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 the story I've been using since the beginning of classes it's very simple my physical mass is harder than my emotional mental plane. It's normal, like anyone. It will take time and more application for the human body to accept, to mourn, until I am in the physical presence of that person. I'm not. Maybe I never will. Doesn't matter at this point. Lose. The last thing that will be reactivated in this crisis are the travels and the airports. So this is the last thing that will be resolved. So any false hope is so far in the future. Let's just forget about it. <sighs> yes, and I, it makes me be human, of course. <laughs> of course. Hey, I am not chastising myself for not being disciplined with the fucking floor. I mean, <laughs> I care for my well-being, my health so much. Don't worry about if I'm, you know, obsessed. This is not OCD. It's a game. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to clean the floor right after this class. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I'm going to go absorb myself and resolve what I can gently. I'm going to play video games, eat, relax. Uh, there's another thing I'm not doing just because I have to be really focused in the head and I don't feel like it. It is uh, publishing the book of Shivagam. Uh, I've only had it for a few days, so it's not like if I was procrastinating for years. But Shivagam has a new book and for six, seven days now, I have all the material but I have to go work and that means like work going through all the millions of fucking details because if I miss one there's a mistake in the book and I have to be like, mentally in the zone I feel it coming seven days to fall into a productivity zone that's kind of longer than usual but this morning has been so changing, so disturbing, so moving inside. 
So yeah, that's another thing I'm kind of disappointed at myself. Usually I would have jumped on like next day after I get material, go and work, work, work. I've done other things for work, but I want to publish the book of Shivam. You want that book. It's, I mean, it's in Spanish. It's pretty cool. Getting in the zone, you know, the mental zone. Why am I not getting there? So I think it's just like the the flow of things. And, um, you know, I just have to put my mind to it and it will happen. And once it's done, then it's the printers and, you know, so on. So I don't know, within a few weeks, it'll be on the shelves somewhere. It'll be on Amazon. <sighs> I enjoy mentioning those things that you say, oh, so Maha's not perfect. <laughs> The fuck is wrong with you guys with, with this concept of perfection and imperfection? We're just human beings going through events. Things happen. We deal with them. It's simple. Yeah. Candy time. Yeah. I'm wearing the same clothing as yesterday in class. Because I, yeah, I didn't do sports yesterday, so it's still clean, but I did shower. But uh, today's class is a follow-up on yesterday. I imagine Friday I'll have changed it <laughs> or cleaned it. I love you guys. It's really fun. It's, it's good to finish this class just chilling, talking about little stuff, personal stuff. It is part of the teaching, you know, I do this for the purpose it has. It, it is honestly helping me, making me feel good to share my personal things, but it's, it's for you to have an example of accepting yourself as you are. Just from the state I am now, how can I progress? It takes a special kind of courage to make the animal accept it's not gonna happen. Lose it. Mourn it. <sighs> Another thing that my physical body is missing, as much as my mind, luxury restaurant with friends. <sighs> Busting 400 bucks for three or four people to have the most exquisite meal. A bottle of Falbueno Numero Cinco produced in Spain. My favorite wine in the world. Don't ship me a bottle. I mean, it's it's hundreds of euros. Just don't, don't do that. But once in a while, I would offer me a bottle like that. Decanted so I can digest even better. Ah. <sighs> And talking with friends. Yeah, I miss that. Ah. Lose. Just lose. Be honest with yourself. Accept it. Lose. And when you're done with a good morning session, focus on what you're grateful for. Yeah, Lotte, you know that, right? Fancy little place we used to go once a year. I will see you on Friday for another contemplation that probably will... Oh, not a long practice again. Yes, this week it's long practices. Feels good. It's a pleasure to share.